Michael Cunningham, educide researcher, defines the term educide as the systematic and deliberate destruction of a group's culture, language and identity through education systems. He concluded that it is a form of cultural genocide that aims to assimilate minority groups into the dominant culture, often against their will. This can be accomplished knowingly or unknowingly. Educide can take many forms, including forced assimilation, the suppression of indigenous languages and the imposition of a foreign curriculum. One of the most insidious aspects of educide is that it is often perpetrated under the guise of benevolence or the best intentions. Colonial powers, for example, often justified their educational policies because they were civilizing the native population. Schools justify their curriculums by saying that they are helping the students. With help like this, we can ask what side they are supporting. However, the true aim of educide is to control and subjugate. By stripping a group of its culture and identity, the dominant group can more easily maintain its power and privilege. Educide is a serious issue that has had a devastating impact on indigenous communities around the world. It is a violation of human rights and a threat to cultural diversity. Dehumanization is a process by which a person or group is denied their humanity. This can be done in many ways, including through physical violence, verbal abuse, and social exclusion. When someone is dehumanized, they are seen as less than human, as an object or a thing. This can have a profound impact on their mental and emotional health. Dehumanization is often used as a way to justify violence and oppression. If a group of people is seen as less than human, it is easier to rationalize treating them inhumanely. It is important to understand dehumanization because it is a powerful tool that can be used to justify great evil. When we understand how dehumanization works, we are better equipped to resist it. We can also work to create a more just and compassionate world where everyone is treated with dignity and respect. Dehumanization can happen anywhere to anyone. It is important to be aware of the signs of dehumanization so that we can challenge it whenever and wherever we see it. Dehumanization can manifest in many ways, both subtle and overt. It can involve physical violence, such as genocide or torture. It can also manifest as psychological abuse, such as verbal harassment, bullying, and propaganda. Social exclusion, discrimination, and prejudice are also forms of dehumanization, as they deny individuals or groups their full rights and participation in society. Often, dehumanization utilizes language that compares individuals or groups to animals, vermin, or diseases, stripping them of their humanity and making it easier to justify violence and oppression against them. Dehumanization is perpetrated by individuals, groups, and institutions that seek to establish or maintain power, control, or dominance over others. These perpetrators may be motivated by a variety of factors, including prejudice, fear, greed, and the desire to maintain social hierarchies. Propaganda, hate speech, and discriminatory policies are often used to spread dehumanizing narratives and incite violence against targeted groups. Please like, subscribe, and watch for our next video.